another look at the deep meaning in James 4, 8 of the program God has outlined through the atonement to deal with the issue of sin. We are, <clears throat> we are pardoned in the new birth of the practice of sin, sinning, and we are purified in the second work of grace from the pollution of sin and the power of sin is broken. Other terms we can use in addition to um, terms for the new birth. One more for the new birth is simply the birth, I am born of the Spirit. In the second work of grace, I am baptized with the Spirit. John the Baptist said, I baptize with water. And he pointed out Jesus to his own disciples and to the people hearing him. But he said, that one who comes after me, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. I would to God that we would have the biblical knowledge and conviction of the Holy Spirit that we would have the same, and I mean this right, we would have the same casual, almost, matter-of-fact acceptance of the need, the command, to be baptized with water for the remission of sins. Now, we know the baptismal formula and the water itself is not what removes sins or remits them, takes them away. It is repentance and faith. But no one seems to... to uh, have their hair stand up on their neck and bow their neck and bristle at suggesting, now that you've asked Jesus to come into your heart, um, let's move on to being baptized. Nobody screeches over that, that I know of. Why not have the same cooperative attitude when Jesus says, you also need to be baptized with the Spirit and with fire. Why is there such an unnecessary ruckus over it? One reason, I think, is it, it spells the worst blow to the enemy. Now, I'm not saying that the devil's happy to see us get saved. But when we get converted, when we get saved, when we're born of the Spirit, we still have remaining the bent to sinning, which is the devil's foothold, beachhead, remaining in my heart. It is the chief thing that leads to backsliding, cooling off, drifting away. Once more the thorns of Jesus' parable come up in our hearts and choke, it says literally, to death, the word. I wish we would just move as calmly and easily. Yes, if there's a further baptism that Jesus spoke of, I want it. I'll seek it. I'll obey him. In that work, the second work of being baptized with the Spirit, our hearts are cleansed from that inward bent to sinning and rebellion that we were born with. Some have identified that or defined it as an excessive love of self, which is, is a good definition. It creates pride. It creates um, vaunting our judgment against God's. We know better than God. We set aside his agenda for us and substitute it with ours. And we <clears throat> find ourselves at odds with God. And so, in the words of Tozer, Tozer said the first work of grace, we must forsake our sins. In the second, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he said, we must go on and forsake ourselves. That's the work that God wants to do, that Paul prayed for, for the Thessalonians, that they would be entirely sanctified. That work is to remove from my heart 
the excessive love of self and replace it with humility and a, an utter surrender to the will of God, His plans, His agenda. I lay my ambitions and my will at His feet and I say, Lord, Thy will be done. There's no other way to live. The only way that we not only obtain the baptism of the Spirit, it's the only way we retain it. The only way we keep it is by maintaining a humble heart, being dead indeed unto ourself, and alive, living in other words, for God. This is the core meaning of both works of grace, the birth of the Spirit, the baptism with the Spirit. We must have both for the full conquering of the sin issue. Father in heaven, may we gladly, freely, quickly follow your guidance and your commands just as calmly and as matter-of-factly as we would be water baptized symbolizing my sins have been washed away we need to move on to being baptized with the Spirit for the purification of our hearts in Jesus name we pray Amen